Hey guys, Richard Music here, back with another video, and today I'm going to tell you guys how to make spatial beats using Dolby Atmos. In order to do this tutorial, you just need two pieces of software, which is the Atmos Render Room and a few Atmos plugins. A guide to install those plugins will be in the description below. And before we get this video started, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys want more spatial audio slash Atmos mixing content. I'm going to be doing this for a lot of other dolls. I'm also going to be doing some more in-depth tutorials about these concepts and I'm gonna cut to a tutorial about how to use render room once you have Dolby Atmos render room you'll want to open it and when you open it you'll see a screen similar to this now the first thing you need to do is hit command comma or you can go up to the top and go to the preferences window and we'll need to configure a few settings here what you want to do now is you'll want to plug in whatever audio interface or pair of headphones that you're going to be using to monitor the audio coming from render room so let's go over the settings now you want to have core audio selected you want to select Dolby audio bridge from this list here as your output device you'll want to use whatever headphones slash interface you plan to use and for external sync source you'll want to go to LTC it's usually set to MTC by default but you want to set it to LTC very important you need to go to headphone only mode and check that and I would do routing one through two okay now something to note about sample rate you're probably going to want to work at 48k and it's important you can move on from here to the headphone tab over here and what you'll want to do is you want to set it to binaural okay it's very important because this is what's going to allow you to basically uh, model you being in a Dolby Atmos room okay this window is a window I find myself often on because what you can do here is you can basically a B between stereo and binaural audio which will help you kind of get a feel for how this mix is going to translate and then make sure that you hit accept down here the render room actually isn't really used to control any of the objects it is simply used for monitoring and visualizing your mix it is also used for recording your mix up here you have different things you can mute for example you can mute the objects beds or you can mute both of them next you have basically a dim switch you have a recording section up here and this also is the enable sync button right here and what this does is it syncs the render room to your DAW which you will need in order to actually record. Next you'll have this object list over here. This whole purple section is your bed. The best way to describe a bed it's basically like your kind of stationary mix and then you have your objects and your objects are basically the individual instruments that you can turn into objects and have them uh, be panned around super easily, position them super easy. This will make much more sense once you see an example. It's important to note though that with Pro Tools you're only going to get a finite number of objects that you can use unless you're using Pro Tools Ultimate. Next you have a simulation right here of all the different speakers so you can mute, say you want to mute the center channel, left channel, right channel. And then you have this view right here, there's a theater view if you're working on films and there's a person view I just keep it on person view you can also number objects which can be really helpful and when in organizing things but that's basically all I really do okay so we're back here in FL studio put in this little beat like insanely simple beat just to test things out so so the first thing you need to do is go to options audio settings and you want to go to Dolby audio bridge and make sure simple right is set to 48,000 because that's what render room uses after that close it then you'll want to go to your master and we're actually going to unroute the master fader right here and we're just going to go to none now we can see right here this is assigned to insert one and this is assigned to insert two right here now here we have our list of objects now you guys might remember this from the video but Outputs 1 through 10 are actually going to be part of the Dolby Render Room bed, okay? So, you cannot use outputs 1 through 10 as objects that are part of the bed. We're going to start by routing this kick drum. The first thing you need to do is go down and assign it to an output. In this case, I'm assigning it to output 11 and 12, which will correspond to object 11 and 12. Now, in order to have this working, you need to assign a Dolby Atmos panner to the actual channel. 
So I'm gonna go up here to more plugins. And if you guys don't see the Atmos pane, you might have to rescan your plugins folder. But I'm gonna search up Atmos and boom, I have Dolby Atmos music painter. You guys might not be able to see that. Here it is. I'm gonna open it up and this green light means it's connected to my instance of render room and this is the panner I'm going to be using to basically manipulate this object through the Atmos space. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have to match the routing in the plugin to the routing in the channel strip. So I can literally just type in 11, hit tab and type in 12, tab and boom I instantly have this object routed and I can use this software to basically pan it around the virtual Dolby room, you have your basic directions here, you have your X, Y, Z is actually your height, and then you also have your size, and you can make an object bleed into more speakers, which basically just makes it bigger in the whole kind of Dolby Atmos spectrum, I guess, so to speak. I'll be getting into the sequencer and some of this more advanced stuff in some of my later videos, but this is just the basics for this video. We're also going to be routing our clap, so we're going to do the same thing, find the music panner. So we have our music panner here, and we want this clap to be on obviously a different object than the first one. So 13 through 14, I'm going to type in 13, so it's 14. Also, it's probably a good idea to make a template, so you don't have to do this every single time. This will save you, honestly, a lot of time. You guys won't be able to hear any of the audio, but it's coming through Render Room, and things will be working if you will know things are working when the objects in the panner correspond to the render room view and your object indicators are lighting up indicating that yes audio is coming through so there you go that's how you guys can start making spatial beats in fl studio using dolby atmos render room pretty cool stuff and yeah i think it'll make you a better producer to experiment with technology like this even if this thing doesn't stick i think it is actually really cool and you'll find that you have a lot more space to put different pieces of effects or hi-hats or any of that stuff. Reverb and melodies can sound really, really, really interesting when you start having samples, say, come from behind you to the left of you, to the front of you, you can make some really interesting layers and you won't have to carve an EQ as much as well. So yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this. This is just a basic tutorial on how to get started using Dolby Atmos render in FL Studio. If you guys did enjoy this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Bye.